There's more to listen up than what you see on TV. Follow us on Twitter or join our fan page on Facebook. You'll find the details on our website at listenuptv.com. And while you're there, tell us what you think. Has this economic crisis shaken your hope for the future? You'll find us at listenuptv.com. Welcome back. We're looking at the new economic realities and their impact on us as spiritual people. Learning to live within your means can be a challenge for those not used to austerity. So what are some tips for finding that new equilibrium? Melinda Esterbrooks has this report. Okay, I admit it. Budgeting has never been my strong suit. I like pretty things, as you can see. But the recent economy has given me a wake-up call. So, looking for good practical advice on realigning my priorities, I arrived at the door of a money master. Good morning, AIG. How may I direct your call? Now, not to be confused with AIG, that once mighty American insurance giant, this is AIC, you know, the buy, hold, and prosper people. If the opulence of their lobby is any indication, they know a thing or two about prospering. CEO Jonathan Wellam seems quite comfortable in the midst of elegance, but he's got both feet planted firmly on the ground. If you go back over the last couple of decades, we've had a large escalation in the debt levels throughout our developed world, and particularly in North America and even more intensely in the United States. And what that means is that people have been buying goods and services on debt that they really can't afford. Multiply that same problem massively, and what do you get? Millions of people like me, but also entire industries, entire countries buying stuff they can't afford. Throw in some unethical Wall Street insiders, and what have you got? A mess. And so what that practically means is they have to start paying down that debt, and they can't spend as much. So it means that there's going to be less products and services purchases, which, which places pressure on companies. So there'll be, you know, companies are going to have to shrink, some companies will go out of business, and people are going to have to recalibrate their spending back to what they can afford, and what are the most important items they really need to be buying. It isn't going to be easy. It puts a lot of stresses through the whole system. Um, and it will cause a lot of people to reevaluate their lives. And I think, I think in a good manner, but it will be painful. You know, for many people, they have been living very responsibly. They're, they're still broadsided because the economy weakens and their jobs could still be at jeopardy even though they were good savers and weren't, incur you know, weren't encouraged to, to, you know, to rack up the kind of debt levels. But for other folks, if, if their purpose and meaning really was in the accumulation of things and all of a sudden that's taken away from them, I think in, in many cases that's devastating and they really have to go back to basics and reevaluate their lives. Jonathan says it's a much needed, long overdue, moral wake-up call. I hope it's a moral wake-up call. I mean, I think uh, there's, there's tremendous ethical implications. And, uh, you know, right now the way we have been functioning is spending the next generation's wealth. That's a concern. I think we should all be, all be talking to our government officials and uh, putting pressure on the government to be spending responsibly, to be investing properly, and to be encouraging private enterprise and businesses to invest back in the economies if we're going to be well positioned for the long term. Otherwise, we will laden our economy with massive debts, which you know our, our children are going to be stuck with. And that um, really is a you know borderline crime when you consider the size of what we're laying on our children and the next generation. This to me is a serious issue. But what can we as individuals do? Plenty. And it starts with getting back to the basics. The first step is a budget. You know, it, it really is going back to basics. Probably the same things I know that my mother taught me and their generation before them, the people actually went through the depression and went through sort of the ups and downs of the economy, go back to a budget. Lay out your priorities. Make sure that if you're going to use debt, it's really for long-term assets of very high quality, like when you buy a home. And then pay down the home. And make sure that if you're going to go out and buy con you know, consumable items, you can afford them. As a Christian, Jonathan has reflected long and hard on what Jesus teaches about money. I think, again, one's life is focused just on the love of money or the love of things. It will lead to all sorts of bad 
outcomes because that's not what our ground should be. Our ground and our foundation must be our relationship with God. It is relationship oriented, which then spills over to our relationship with our fellow uh, human beings that we uh, associate with, our families, our structure. This is the most important thing. It has to anchor us. And then the money and wealth becomes a tremendous tool that we can use in service of helping people, whether it's people that don't have as much as us and giving them a hand up so that they have opportunities, or whether it's uh, investing in businesses and creativity and enterprise so that we create jobs and efficiencies in the economy. We should be investors. We're here to live purposeful lives and to help all of those around us. And uh, that, that gives us a true value, I think, uh, even more so when there's a recession. So it gives us greater opportunity to make a difference uh, in, in our lives and in the lives of other people. Continuing the journey of discovering proper financial priorities, I'm on the road again. For Listen Up TV, I'm Melinda Estabrooks. When we come back, lessons of frugality and life from those who know poverty.